Hey there, my fellow Indians. Welcome to News Hamster. So you've all been watching the news. You all know that Sri Lanka has been hit by the worst economic crisis of its history. People are out there protesting because there is no food or fuel. Social media has been banned. The inflation has reached 17.5%. Even exams have been cancelled because there is no ink or paper for the students. The situation is worse because Sri Lanka has no money to fund any of this. So what has contributed to Sri Lanka reaching here? What is China's role in this particular scenario? How did Sri Lanka push itself into this kind of an economic crisis? And most importantly in this video, we will understand what does India as a country have to learn from this economic crisis of Sri Lanka? All this will be explained in this video, so stay tuned with me until the video ends. And if you're not subscribed to News Hamster, do it right now. And now fuel rationing, Sri Lankans struggles as crisis worsens. Sri Lanka has declared a state of public emergency. And Sri Lanka, which is battling the crippling financial crisis, food prices have skyrocketed. Ladies and gentlemen, we have to understand that this situation is not just economical or financial. The situation is more social and political. Since Sri Lanka has gotten independence, it has been affected with what you call as a civil war. There have been two kinds of population living in Sri Lanka. One is the Sinhalese and the other is the Tamilians. And the Sri Lankan government, since its very independence, has been given preference to the growth of Sinhalese more than Tamils. This kind of communal segregation and this kind of communal tension led to a full-fledged civil war in Sri Lanka between the Sinhalese who were represented by the government and the Tamilians. Now, this civil war gave birth to what you call as LTTE or the liberation of Tamil Tigers Elam. This civil war, its role in the growth of Sri Lanka, India's involvement in this civil war has all been explained in this video where we have spoken in the backdrop of the release of the web series called as Family Man. So do check out this video to understand this civil war in detail. But what I'm trying to point out with this particular thing is that because of the civil war and because of this a focus on one community and so-called state-sponsored ethnic cleansing by the Sri Lankan government. Sri Lanka lost almost 20 precious years that it had and it can, and which could be used for its economic growth and prosperity. Also, Sri Lanka spent a whooping $200 billion on this particular civil war, which it could have used for its economic growth and development. In contrast, India, when it got independence, it completely focused on the industrial growth and the agricultural growth of the country. This is one of the reasons why India is growing well when it comes to economy. Many years later, after the death of the LTTE leader, Velu Pillai Prabhakaran, the civil war came to an end. But the damage was already done. Sri Lanka had lost a lot of money. At the same time, Sri Lanka had lost a lot of uh, precious time that it had for growth and development. But as all country have the potential to grow, Sri Lanka also had the potential to grow. Now, several countries bank on their particular commodities or particular, you know, unique points. For example, Gulf has oil. For example, Israel has brains. Japan also has brains. At the same time, Taiwan had the semiconductor industry. They use this in a most beautiful fashion to grow. Sri Lanka at this time realized that it had a very strategic location. And at this point in time comes into picture the Humban Tota port which is located in southern Sri Lanka and is placed very strategically in the Indian Ocean region. Now, this port is a very important port because on a daily basis, about 36,000 ships pass through this. And this port is again very strategically located between the trade routes of the Suez Canal and on the east in the Strait of Malacca. Now, Sri Lanka was supposed to bank on this particular port because this port has amazing facilities. It has huge storage and throughout the year, it remains dry. So Sri Lanka had to bank on this opportunity, but Sri Lanka did realize that they did not have the money nor the resources to bank on this particular port. At this point in time, a friend came into picture who was coming very, very close to Sri Lanka as time was progressing. I'm talking about China. Now here, the whole situation of debt trap also comes into picture. China at this position was trying to make friends with smaller economic nations like Sri Lanka, Bangladesh, Myanmar, because China very clearly knew that organizations like World Bank and IMF will not lend money for their progress in development. China came in and said that I will give you loan for your progress in development. Like how they said in 1950s, Hindi, Chini, Bhai, Bhai. Here they said Chini, Sri Lankan, Bhai, Bhai. And they said, we will give you a loan of worth $1 billion particularly for the growth of Humban Dota port. But they said we have a particular 
condition or you could say we have particular conditions that you have to fulfill if you get this loan now one of that condition is that to make the growth on the port or you could say to you know modernize or develop the humban tota port you have to give the project you have to give the tender to chinese company so with this chinese companies also came in chinese workers so basically whatever china had given sri lanka was coming back to china now there was no other such clauses where you know this is the end this is the maximum capping limit or whatever and these chinese companies who have got the tender could overbill sri lanka and again the same money would be going back to china sri lanka was bound by this because sri lanka had signed an mou with china the second condition is the loans that were given to sri lanka they had to be guaranteed by a cash deposit by recipient countries in banks controlled by china so basically whatever money that sri lanka had got in they had to be backed by chinese banks that could immediately be controlled by china itself now it simply points out that if sri lanka fails to pay back china can immediately take the money from them apart from this normally an organization a financial organization or any country when they give a loan they give an interest of about 2 to 3% but here china said i'm going to charge an interest of 4 to 6% apart from this china said that you have to pay back within a period of uh, 10 to 15 years and uh, other scenarios are very very different now uh, we have to understand that the basic idea here is the interest rate was very high and the time period was very very low but sri lanka took up the challenge because sri lanka had no other way to go now you must be thinking what will be the benefit for china in this it's simple if they don't pay back china gets what it wants now china had signed an mou with sri lanka which said that if you do not pay back the loan in the right period of time we will get control of the humban tota port on a lease of 99 years so that means sri lanka will lose control on humban tota port and it will be entirely controlled by china which it eventually did and of course china also went on to say that apart from this apart from the control of the port we will again take control of 15000 acres of land because you failed to give us the money back china to cover this up also said that uh, we will create employment opportunities for you in times to come china is a very dubious nation we cannot uh, deny that because if you if you see what happened in galwan and ladakh or even what is happening in any other region it's it's not only it's not only limited to india because china is emulating the same thing in malaysia and brunei in vietnam so many other nations so if you look at it this is the way china easily put out its debt trap in sri lanka and humban tota port is only a prime example let me repeat it's a prime example because this kind of debt trap was again laid down for other projects like the railway projects infrastructural projects many such projects and humban tota port is only an example that i can possibly quote today what added to this is also important because when 2020 when covid 19 came down sri lanka which was hugely driven by its tourism industry was completely shut down because of a lockdown there was no income there was no economic growth for sri lanka whatsoever apart from this we also have to understand that covid in sri lanka was so rampant that any other industry could not particularly flourish in the country apart from this bombings the most popular eastern bombings that affected the you could say the communal fabric apart from that targeting of muslims in sri lanka all this particularly contributed to the worsening of economy in sri lanka right time the russia ukraine war also started which increased the prices of crude oil and petroleum for the country which it couldn't possibly afford here the sri lanka's foreign debt increased and sri lanka's foreign reserves decreased this was in the scenario more and the country kept falling back into worse economic crisis this is not all we also have to understand that sri lanka is being ruled by the rajapaksha family the current the leader of sri lanka is gotabaya rajapaksha who is the brother of mahinda rajapaksha what i'm simply trying to point out is sri lanka is very much affected by dynasty politics nine of the cabinet ministers belong to a same family and 75% of the economic handling or financial handling is done by a single family now this has caused factors like corruption and red tapeism to come into picture and worst kind of decisions have been made for the financial progress of the country which has led to this particular scenario next point is when the rajapakshas wanted to come to power they promised huge number of freebies free uh, free electricity free subsidies so on and so forth 
Now we have to understand freebies can definitely win your elections, but they cannot propel your country's stature in the global economy. Now, lastly, China's coming in and Sri Lanka opening its doors, opening its arms, you come and help us out was a very bad decision that they made. They should have understood the malified intentions of China, like how India is playing a very, very smart game when it comes to foreign relations. So these are all the factors that brought Sri Lanka to where it is. Now, the most important part of this video is what does India have to understand and what can India learn from this? Primary thing that India can learn is communal segregation and communal tensions can look good for your ideological superiority. But for a country's economic growth, these are the worst kind of a problem that you can possibly pose. If you're trying to suppress a community, if you're trying to separate a community, your economy is not growing. This is something that India has to understand because recently in Karnataka, what we have seen, uh, barring uh, Muslim traders from selling their produces, uh, taking their cabs or whatever it is, this can look good at the outset, but this will later contribute to the economic growth because Karnataka's economy is, is definitely not doing great. And now we are also seeing that many, many companies are moving out of Karnataka due to this communal tensions. Apart from this, what India can learn from this particular incident is the fact that one leader, one party or one company, one monopoly is never beneficial for anyone, not a country, not a company or not an organization. One person is never a game. This is a very important factor that Sri Lanka faced. Apart from this, freebies, I pointed out, can win elections, but they cannot win a good country. They cannot push your country into uh, you know, the global economy. And last but not the least, your allies. Your allies determine your growth. Now, China's moving closeness with Sri Lanka deteriorated its positions. Now, China is doing the same thing with countries like Bangladesh, Myanmar and others. China has a very crucial role to play because it's trying to build a string of pearls around India where it could counter India's military might. So when a country is making friends, when, it, when a country is making enemies, the country has to think about its political, its social and its strategical implications that it can possibly have. So ladies and gentlemen, that's it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. And if you have liked the content, definitely press the like button, subscribe to News Hamster and share this video with all your inquisitive friends who want to know what exactly is happening in Sri Lanka and why the people are protesting in this particular country. Because News Hamster only aims at bringing you the right facts and the right picture because it's your choice and no noise. Thanks so much for watching.